question, you know, when we talk about longevity, and I don't think, well, when I say Sam Hands, most people know who he is, but Sam and I had a great discussion today, and he said, I'm reading a lot and hearing a lot about longevity, and he said, you're always up on all this stuff. Uh, what do you think? I said, Sam, if we had the tools to make those selections, I think we could do a very good job. I said, we do not have the tools to select for longevity. What we do have is, once again, to apply the job description to the cattle that we expect them to, to do. So, Henry Gardner started a Tolea breeding program in 1964. You breed in 50 days or you never enter into the herd. When Greg and I graduated in the early 80s, we reduced that to where we keep the first cycle for ourselves. Okay, so we manage reproduction. We select for the other traits. So by that I mean, you know, people say, oh, you've been total AI since 1964. Oh my goodness, this is our 50th anniversary. <laughs> and I'm like, and they go, you must have wonderful reproduction. It's okay. I'd love to say I did something better than Henry Gardner, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, we do the same, you know? And I hear all this rhetoric about carcass traits and, and maternal. Those carcass traits, you've got to have maternal. You're not going to have maternal. You can't have carcass. They can't reproduce. And uh, that's not right. You know, if I'm selecting for reproduction by you either breed in this time-restricted breeding season or you're out of here, I'm managing reproduction because it's a lowly heritable trait, 0.1 or less. But I'm making the ones stay and enter into the herd that makes it easier for me to manage. Okay, so back to the Sam Hands discussion about longevity. You know, various breeds have various ways they term that. And we look at, uh, let's say, the Red Angus breed, they have stayability. American Angus, Black Angus has, they have for pregnancy, which we use to a great deal. Um, you know, we've contributed over 12% of all the records to have for pregnancy. It's important. We measure it the best way we can, but it's still lowly heritable. So we want to keep it between that ditch. The reality of measuring longevity is they either stay in the herd or they don't. If they reproduce, they're, they're here. If they don't, they're gone. And I have a lot of customers that uh, tell me when a cow gets to be 10 years of age, they ship them regardless. And as I said to Sam, I said, the reality of it is, at best, I don't think it would be right for any of us to say that we can accurately and consistently select for longevity beyond the fact that since we don't have a great way to measure it, we're going to be about average. You know, if we measured everybody's height in this room, most of us would be about average. And so if I can't make a selection scheme, Henry Gardner made them shorter, he made them taller, he made them give less milk or more milk, but it, it was random, but they weighed the same because he had no way, and he was primarily trying to change, you know, the pay weight of our steer calves. He could not increase that because, in general, they were all average. Longevity would be the same way. Now, that being said, we have 15, 16-year-old commercial cows, as long as they reproduce, and, and that's getting to a point sometimes like, oh, Mark, you bred her one year too long. I mean, she's a pure granny. But as long as they can compete and they can reproduce and they, they can do that, I mean, and we have 1,600 commercial cows now, and we feel like, you know, they'd be half and seven-eighths, three-quarters, seven-eighths sisters to our registered cow herd, who, of course, we roll very fast. We, we feel like we have a good handle on managing reproduction, and we let them live here as long as they would like to reproduce.